Hello and welcome to another episode of John Versations, where it's not just a conversation, it's a John Versation. I am joined today by Susie Jennings. You know, uh, we see them everywhere we go, every stoplight, busy cities, homeless people. And I'm sure if you're like me, you you find this little check in your heart where you go, well, I don't know, do I, is this money going to be used for any good if I give a donation? Are they going to run in and get something uh, bad for them, you know, alcohol or tobacco or something like that? And And... Susie has a ministry called Operation Care where she ministers to the homeless, but she did it kind of begrudgingly. It didn't, it didn't start that way. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. I did not like homeless at all because uh, when I was growing up in the Philippines, my mother used to feed them in our kitchen, and they ate my food, occupied my space. Yeah. And you actually w- were assaulted by one of them one time. Yes. Huh? One of the homeless ladies that my mom fed, she slapped me when I was in the marketplace and she just saw my familiar face and she was schizophrenic Mm. and so that's why I grew up not liking any homeless people. Yeah, well now how did God change your heart? (laughs) Well out of my brokenness I chose joy and I found my purpose. Uh, My husband committed suicide from a mental illness. He Mm. was in the military and Uh, He disappeared from our home for 30 days. He was missing. We found him 30 days later, and he was already a decomposing corpse. Mm. He committed suicide. He shot himself. And then uh, five months later, my neighbor, 30 feet from me, while I was baking a cake, he also shot his heart. He committed suicide. I got very mad at God. I questioned God why. And then that same night, September 1993, God gave me a dream. In the dream, I was knocking at my neighbor's doors telling them about Jesus. Next day, I woke up. I said, I'm going to choose joy because mm. the Bible said, uh, Psalms 30, verse 5, weeping me endure for a night. Joy comes in the morning. Amen, yeah. So you had the vision, but that's not where it stopped. God laid something on your heart that you weren't too excited about at first. <laughs> yeah, so <clears throat> um, after... After I chose Joy, God led me under the bridge in downtown Dallas three weeks later. And he said, go under the bridge, help the people, homeless, living in cardboard boxes. And I said, no, not me. They're crazy. Mm. And, and then God said, you ask me. What can you do for me? That was my road to Damascus experience. Wow. I said, God, forgive me. I'll go. What could I take to the needy people? And the Lord said, in my spirit, I hear it in my heart. He said, blankets. So the next day, 24 hours from the time I, co- I heard the voice of God, I obeyed. I went to Baylor Hospital where I was supervisor nurse. And then I asked all doctors and nurses for $5 so I could buy a blanket because that's what God told me. So I became the blanket lady of Dallas for eight years. Me and my mother, me and my 80 plus mother would buy all the blankets uh, that we could have, if, you know, help money, my money. And then on my own, me and my mother. And then uh, the homeless started calling me the blanket lady of Dallas. And then we became nonprofit. And then God gave me a vision wherein we will give a big birthday party for Jesus at the Dallas Convention Center where the guests are the homeless and the poor. Because the Bible said, uh, I just heard this. Actually, this morning I heard this in, the, in my YouTube uh, thing, in my telephone that said uh, the preaching, uh, it was uh, uh, Billy Graham preaching about Call the lame and the poor because the rich will not come to my party. Mm. That's exactly what it is. So we hold a big birthday party for Jesus where the guests are the lame and the poor, the prostitute, the destitute, the homeless. And that's what we're doing. So we're known to hold the largest birthday party for Jesus in America. We have up to 15,000 uh, homeless and poor in Dallas Convention Center. We have 3,700 volunteers. This was pre-COVID. And the heart of the ministry is sharing the gospel because that was the knocking in the door of my home uh, my neighbors in my dream before and then the trademark is foot washing so we wash the dirtiest stinkiest smelliest feet in the world Mm. that's your sin john dirty Mm. stinky and my sin smelly but jesus still gonna wash it that's right matt wow so you you rent out the dallas convention center which is (laughs) an opulent place much like the space that we're in right now and it's 500,000 square feet. 
And, and you open the doors for every homeless person mm-hmm. that wants to come in, wash their feet, mm-hmm. I'm sure, and you know, provide blankets. I'm sure there's other ministry that takes place as well. 60 mem- uh, we have uh, 60 partners that comes and provide help for the whole year also. Wow, and this is not just in Dallas. This is growing yes. uh, around the world, is that right? Yes, we are now in 51 countries and 23 states. And actually during the pandemic 2020, uh, God in an incredible way have provided funds for us so we could give away money during the pandemic we gave it to 47 countries so they could have a birthday party for jesus where they wash feet and put on new socks and shoes to the uh, poorest of the poor we even provided to italy uh, congo sudan uganda israel uh, brazil philippines cambodia sierra leone and about 15,000 got saved and the amazing thing was it was a, a global shutdown because it was yeah. pandemic. Nobody could gather 20 people at one time. Right. In Africa, <clears throat> they stopped the election uh, gathering. But when they heard Operation Care was coming, they opened the door. Thousands came to those meetings in those three countries. The next day, the following day, their churches overflowed because people got saved. Oh, so that is on. what the heart of the ministry is to share Jesus all over the world. And we are not only in Dallas, also every July, we leave the country, we go to a poor, poor countries, and then we serve 2,000 to 5,000 children, and we give away sock shoes, wash feet, share Jesus, give Bibles, give food and clothing. And that's what we're gonna do this July uh, on Vietnam and the Philippines. We have 2,000 children waiting for us. And um, <clears throat> then, so we're going to be, uh, but the best part is this December, this is our 20th year anniversary, we're going to have a big celebration where we're going to show and share and celebrate Jesus. We're going to show the love of Christ to the homeless at the convention center on our 20th year, December 16. And on the evening, we will have the first ever evangelistic, global, digital, live streaming. Never happened before with Nick Wojcik as the main speaker. Yeah. We're gonna, we are waiting for Nikki Cruz to respond. And this Saturday, we're going to invite Dr. Tony Evans. And also uh, Nicole Mullins, <coughs> we invited her to to come, and so we're negotiating right now. And then the Shane and Shane is coming. My so goodness! This is gonna happen two parties the same day, celebration of Jesus' birthday. Fantastic! Did you ever imagine that when God gave you that dream, when you started just going to your other nurses and doctors at your hospital in Baylor, did you ever imagine that? those few donations and a few blankets would turn into a global movement. It's incredible. No, I never thought of that because I was the most unlikely person to be (laughs) called. I hated the homeless, remember, I could not stand them. But for them, uh, for the Lord to call me the most unlikely person to be called, but then God changed me completely. I even became a homeless person and and live in the street in Dallas to experience, and it opened my eyes very big. So uh, I, I am a better person now than before. I don't have any children on my own, but I have 33,000 in <laughs> 15 countries where I personally oh, went wow. and helped every July. It's called Christmas in July. Mm. So if, if your listeners wants to participate, they could go to our website, opcare.org, and $30 could help one child, and we have 2,000 children that need help, so they could receive t-shirts and food and shoes and socks and personal care items, backpacks and school supplies, and then we connect them to churches. Wow. Now, Susie, I got to tell you, I've seen you wandering around the halls here. You know, you've got your, your very flashy outfit, which is just your, your, your nature, but you would never, you would never know what God is pouring through you to minister to others around the world. It's absolutely incredible. So up care, opcare.org o-p-c-a-r-e.org and please join us and we wanted this to happen to all of the cities all over the world so if you want if you're interested to do this event you could call us and connect with us we will teach you how to do this event this is a birthday celebration for jesus the goal is that the whole world one day movement will celebrate in the morning they were going to show the love of christ in the evening we're going to share Jesus all over the world and then we're going to celebrate Jesus and so you could two ways that you could uh, help us you could uh, embed our live streaming Mm -hmm. in your in your any YouTube any social media and then also you could promote if you're in the radio please promote this before it happened we're in the whole world we do this and we're going to redo it again December 24 uh, at 7 p.m. we're in we could show 
uh, what happened all over the world on December 16th. December 16th is the third Saturday, a Saturday before Christmas. That's mm. what we do every year, a yeah. Saturday before Christmas. But on December 24th, we will rebroadcast. So it's twice where in the world will hear Jesus. Millions, hey John, it's going to be hashtag one day millionaires, H-E-I-R-S. Okay. One day millionaires. No, I don't like millions, John. Mm -hmm. I want billions. One day, billionaires for Jesus. I hear you. Susie, wow. I know why it's grown so so strong, because, my goodness, you don't get in her way. I mean, <laughs> you're going to get on board or get out of the way, it seems like. So Operation Care, opcare.org, um, there is a global event taking place. Um, and that, Nick Velichek, if you don't know, it's the it's the guy you've seen his videos all over YouTube or TikTok or whatever. He's the he's the guy from I believe Australia. Yes. Um, with uh, born with no arms, no legs, just has a very little uh, little bit to, to work with yes. there. And one of the most most inspirational guys you've ever heard talk. Um, and then in addition to that. Um, boy, the folks that you're working on getting, uh, Shane and Shane and yes. Tony Evans, I mean, fantastic event. So, um, I'm going to talk to Tony this Saturday. I'm speaking in his church. Okay. All right. Well, I'm sure he will, he'll sign up because you, <laughs> you don't, you don't get in her way, you know? So, um, Susie, it's a joy to, to be with you. Thank you so much. The, uh, the ministry again, opcare.org. And we want to encourage and invite everyone to, uh, take, Take part in this. It sounds fantastic. Thank you so much for your time, Susie. Thank you. All right. Until next time, this is John Graham. And don't forget, it's not just a conversation. It's a John-versation. And until next time, it's going to be all right.